So it's time for another 15 minute feature Friday. I think it's actually our last internal 15 minute feature Friday of the year. We have one more 15 minute feature Friday next week with the public one. Um, and you know what? I don't have a clue what the topic is, so I can't even tell you what that is. Um, but we're reaching the end of the year. Um, so this week I'm going to be covering what I'm dubbing advanced smart client options. And that's basically just going to be a mishmash of different things around the smart client that I think we haven't talked about before, at least maybe not in detail. Uh, I'm sure over the last uh, 97 or so 15 minute feature Fridays, we've covered different pieces of this. Um, so I don't have a lot of structure here. Uh, in fact, this is the only slide I actually have for, uh, for the entire 15 minute feature Friday. So with that, I'm just going to, uh, kind of bring over the smart client and we're just going to play around a little bit. Um, definitely, if you have any questions about anything, I'll take them. But it's actually kind of funny because we can watch them mow the lawn too. Um, so uh, I just wanted to start off with a, a couple different things. And the first thing I was going to start off with is not even the options at all, but some of the different things we can do with uh, some of these side panes that I don't think a lot of us touch very often. Um, and then also some of the other different features we can use inside of setup mode. Uh, so the first one I wanted to kind of show you was the audio tab. Um, the audio tab allows us to control what we're listening to or what we're talking to. Um, when we're when we have a current selected camera, so this could be useful if we do have a microphone or do have a speaker that is somewhat related to a camera, um, but isn't necessarily uh, assigned to that camera inside the management client. So this will allow us to select from multiple microphones. So if we wanted to, um, you know, hear from one of the other rooms uh, inside of my house, um, we could do that uh, by clicking on my driveway camera. So this allows us to associate a camera, I'm sorry, associate a microphone to a camera that isn't necessarily um, attached to that camera. So that can be useful if you have multiple microphones that you need to listen to, uh, hear different perspectives, and especially if those microphones aren't on the screen you're currently on. And the same thing applies for the speakers as well. Um, so if you wanna to talk to a speaker and you have multiple different angles you wanna be able to talk to, uh, maybe different speakers in different locations, you can select different speakers and then actually click the talk button uh, to be able to talk to that. So with my uh, hallway camera, I can actually go ahead and uh, hit, the, uh, hit the talk button and actually talk out to that. Also this mute button is very useful as well, as you can, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but I, I get a ton of feedback from it, so. Uh, that was the first thing I wanted to show off. Uh, the second thing is I want to spend a little bit of time in setup mode. And this is something uh, that kind of goes back to my early training days uh, when I was first training before we changed over to the new training program. Um, I used to spend quite a bit of time kind of talking about the property section and specifically property section on a camera itself. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. A lot of it's actually really useful. And um, some of it we discouraged the use of, but I did want to kind of go over and, and kind of show you. Uh, the first one's your your live stream selection, and that's something you can always select uh, on on demand. But if uh, if you do have a camera that has multiple live streams coming from it, so if you're uh, on expert or corporate, um, and you wanted to have uh, let's say a low quality and a higher quality or a high frame rate and a low frame rate stream, you can choose which one of those streams is going to be the default stream, even if it's not necessarily the default stream selected the management client. So this kind of allows us to. Uh, allows us to override the default settings that have been defined inside the management client. Um, yeah, you can also, so Jared points out, you can also choose your recording stream as your live stream as well. So your recording stream could be your, um, could be your high, high definition stream and your live, uh, your live stream could be a low definition stream or, or in some cases actually the complete opposite. Uh, image quality is something uh, we definitely skip over as SEs because there's a huge drawback to it. But image quality is actually pretty cool. What it does is it allows us to transcode video on the recording server and send an optimized stream to the browser itself. So right now I'm looking at a full 1080p camera, um, but I'm not occupying my entire monitor space. I'm only occupying probably about a half of the monitor space with this view. And because of that, um, I could actually downgrade this image quality. So if I want to change this over to, let's say, super high, uh, that's actually going to give us, I believe, a, a VGA, if I remember right, or um, I haven't looked at the manual in quite a long time, but I think this will actually give you a VGA quality uh, image. And if I go ahead and uh, leave setup mode, what we'll see is this drop down to a 640 by uh, 360. So not quite VGA. Um, we definitely noticed the image quality change here because it's 
quite a, a big detriment. Uh, however, if I double click on this, it's actually going to revert back to its full uh, 1080p quality. Um, if I would have changed one of these other cameras, let's say my uh, in my backyard, and I change this over to uh, super high, uh, we really don't notice much of a difference. We don't notice much degradation, even though we're still looking at VGA just because it's taking such a small space. So this is actually really good. It takes a lot of load off of the client. This was very important before um, before uh, hardware acceleration came along. Um, but what I will say is uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So if I uh, downgrade the video here, uh, we are actually transcoding this video on the recording server. We're putting in a significant additional load on the recording server. So if you wanna do this for a single view, you know, in this case, I have uh, six cameras in my view, uh, that would probably be acceptable. But if you went and did this for every view on your entire system, that would put a significant load on your, on your server. Um, the same thing kind of applies uh, under frame rate as well. So we can actually reduce frame rates as well. And that could help reduce some of the load as well. When we do this, two things are going to happen. Um, we are going to reduce the frame rate either by a half or by a quarter, depending on which one of those two options you choose. Um, but whenever you're doing frame rate or you're doing image quality adjustments, we're actually transcoding that video into motion JPEG as well. Um, so that, that has a, a couple impacts that could also increase your bandwidth on your network. There's one question uh, I get every once in a while, and that is, you know, how do I prevent these kind of black bars on camera? So this car, this camera is in a uh, uh, a corridor mode or a you know, vertical mode. Uh, so how do I uh, how do I how do I stretch that out? And, and this one you probably wouldn't want to stretch out, but sometimes you'll get a little bit odd resolutions that aren't necessarily full uh, full aspect ratio. And if you want to stretch that out, you can turn on. Um, you can uncheck the maintain image aspect ratio. It'll actually stretch that image out for you. Obviously, that's going to distort your image quite a bit. But if you do have like a, a monitoring station that has a, a four by four, you know, 16 cameras, and there's a lot of black bars, sometimes that can be a little bit unappealing from a visual perspective. So being able to uh, stretch out your images is, is um, sometimes desired. I don't usually recommend it, but some customers like it. Uh, there's a couple other things in here, too. You can do sounds and motion detection, which I think would be quite annoying. Um, basically, you can play a sound anytime there's a motion detected. Um, and last time I checked, it was like a zap sound um, or something like that. Um, and you can also do sounds on events as well. So these are predefined events on the cameras. So some of these options in here are very useful. And uh, one of the cool things is, let's say I want to uh, apply one of these options to the entire screen. I can just come down here and I can say apply to all. And now I've applied low quality resolutions and no, no image aspect ratio to the entire view I'm currently looking at. So that was kind of the, the front end stuff I wanted to, to show off. Uh, the other portion of this that I wanted to cover um, was really I wanted to spend some time inside of the settings. Um, so obviously up here in the top right hand corner, we have a couple options. We can toggle the theme between a light and a dark theme, which I think most of us know. Uh, we can also uh, toggle between a simple and an advanced mode. So right now I'm looking at the advanced mode where I see all of my different options that my uh, smart client profile defines. Uh, but I can also choose a, a simplified mode if I want to remove a lot of those tabs, remove a lot of the timeline options and playback. Um, just basically a less cluttered screen. This is definitely more appropriate for, uh, let's say, just a, a basic operator that needs to watch live video and maybe do very basic playback of video. Um, and we can actually force this through smart client profiles. And that's one thing I definitely recommend doing is um, anytime we have like an operator role, uh, definitely just give them a simplified view if, 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 it, if the situation merits it. Um, just last, actually, just earlier this week, I actually had it come up twice. Uh, somebody said this this client looks complicated, and I basically just turned on simplified mode and, and said, hey, well, it doesn't have to be complicated. We have the options to come in here and, and turn different elements on and off. And we've talked about that in past 15-minute uh, past Feature Fridays uh, using smart client profiles. So the last thing I wanted to cover was just some of the options. Um, I got about five minutes left. Uh, there's a lot of options in here, and we've seen these in the smart client profiles before. Um, we can we can override these settings using a smart client profile. And I definitely recommend any kind of good, uh, any kind of uh, full full service reseller or full service integrator actually come in here and, and, and think about how the, 
the system is going to be used and definitely use smart client profiles to modify uh, most, if not all of these different options. Uh, but things uh, things as simple as, as the way the screen maximizes, and that's actually kind of a big deal. So if we look right now, uh, when I maximize the screen, it, it works as a normal window like any other windows would. Uh, but I can actually force this to do a, um, you know, it didn't actually do what I thought it would do. Usually it maximizes to actual full screen. You, you have to unmaximize and then maximize it, Stephen. If okay. you're changing that application maximization setting. Huh. Well, usually it goes into full screen. I'm probably not doing it right, but um, sometimes it'll go into full screen. Um, we can change the way uh, error messages come up on the screen. So if we don't want to see them at all for some users, we can hide them completely. Uh, we can show them as overlays over the last image we saw instead of showing a black image. So there's a couple options there. Um, we can turn on and off different, uh, turn on and off the title bars if we want to. So we can turn off those title bars uh, at the tops. So there's a lot of different options we have in here that can customize the way the operator, or even just the, even any user really sees uh, the smart client. And these can be done on a per user basis here in the settings, but they're also more prominently used in a smart client profile, which is what we've covered before. Um, I think the last piece I, I really wanted to cover, I did want to do a joystick session, but I don't have any joysticks to set up, but just know that we can bring any joystick into the system that Windows will recognize and we can basically uh, set up the axes. We can set up the forward, the back, the left, the right, twists, buttons, all those different things. We can uh, we can usually bring in here and set up uh, on a client basis. But the last thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the keyboard shortcuts, and these are these are incredibly powerful. The first thing I always recommend uh, that anybody setting up a system, any kind of administrator role set up on a system, and um, would be this uh, reload server configuration. And basically, you'll find that uh, under the application category and under the command reload server configuration. And you can make this anything you want. Uh, I see a lot of control shifts R's or control R's, uh, but F5 works as well. And I like F5 because it's actually quite easy. Um, and all you have to do is hit assign. And now, uh, whenever you make a change to the system, let's say you add a brand new view group or you add a new smart wall, and uh, you want to see those changes be reflected uh, inside the smart client without having the shortcut you would have to close the client or log out of the client and come all the way back in but now all i have to do is hit f5 or reload the server configuration and we'll have everything up to date so this is very useful for administrators that are going through and, and trying to make changes and see what those different changes will uh, have an effect on the system um, there's also a lot of other stuff in here though things that we never talk about um, you can create um, you can create shortcuts to maximize the application uh, minimize the application. You can create a shortcut to create an evidence lock. So if you have somebody who does a lot of uh, you know evidence reviews, you can do something that just creates an evidence lock on the fly. Um, you can switch between live playback. You can go into setup mode. Um, we can make a shortcut key that <laughs> that does talk to speaker, um, so you don't have to actually click the overlay button. Um, there were a couple I saw. You know, I've never even played with these before, but this is kind of cool. Um, if you have multiple views, and I only have one view in here, but you can actually assign shortcut keys to the views. Um, there's another way to do this actually in, in the management client, but this, this actually I think is a bit easier. Uh, so if you wanted to switch between a view using, let's say, control uh, one, control two, control three, uh, all I have to do is uh, assign that. So I've, I've assigned control one. Now if I go to a different view, let's say test, and I want to jump back to uh, my main view I was just on, all I have to do is hit control one. Maybe not. This actually worked uh, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Keyboard shortcuts, control one. Oh, it's jumping to smart wall. I'm done. <laughs> if I want to jump to the smart wall, I can jump uh, hitting control one. So I actually set up the wrong view. Uh, but that's actually pretty cool. Um, that's an easier way, I think, to set up uh, view shortcuts than. than uh, the kind of key commands that you 
can do in a management client. So, um, and there's a lot of other stuff here in this smart client. I actually didn't expect to, I didn't expect this to go this quickly. Um, there's a lot of other stuff in here, um, especially into the keyboard section. Uh, one last thing I did want to show was, and I think all of us know about the video diagnostic overlays, but that's under the advanced section. Uh, there's three levels to these. Level one is a, a basic level that's going to show us our frame rate, our codec, and our resolution. Level two is actually what I leave on all the time. And uh, that is going to show us a little more details. It's going to show us a hardware acceleration details. So it's going to tell us uh, if we're using NVIDIA or if we're using, uh, well, it looks like none of them are using Intel anymore uh, or using Intel. Uh, if multicasting is on, and also what the frame rate is. Level three is actually really useful if you want to, if you just want to come in here and, and see if anything's blatantly wrong. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't even know what it means and, and probably don't care about it, but there's a couple things in here uh, that I think have, have kind of helped me determine problems in the past. Uh, one of them is the frames per second received. So this will tell you how many frames we're actually receiving from the camera opposed to how many are being displayed. So if we're receiving 15 frames a second from the camera, but we're only displaying five, we can actually determine that's kind of a client problem more than a uh, more than a server pro or more than a camera problem. Um, additionally, one thing that's really helped me in the past is this lost frames value here. Uh, the lost frames value is generally zero. Uh, sometimes it you know it, it might be one or two or five, um, but Anytime I've ever had a problem with a camera, a problem with the network, uh, that lost frames number has been so large it actually has been put into exponential notation. So um, it actually was like 10,500 to the 80th power or something like that. So I could tell they had a network problem pretty much immediately when I saw how many lost frames they had had. Um, so, well, with that said, I'm, I'm already three minutes over. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Uh, can you make play, space part play video and stuff? I, I don't know. Uh, Paul, let's find out. I just wanted to add in, you, you touched on earlier with the full frame rate versus reduced frame rate and the full resolution versus reduced. Yeah. Um, be very careful using that. You did you did mention it puts a load on the server, but it, it's uh, rather dramatic what it does to the recording server. So use that very sparingly or not at all and take advantage of your smart client profiles to lock that out. I've had customers with unexplained CPU spikes on their recording servers that... Um, we finally traced back to them having a layout and some users that would periodically bring that layout up and just blow their server out CPU wise, but it only does it when they're viewing those layouts, they take advantage of that feature. So you can prevent people from getting themselves in trouble with the smart client profiles and lock that functionality out. Yeah. Definitely agree. Uh, Paul, to answer your question, I don't think I can make Spacebar do that single uh, single event uh, play and then stop, but it looks like I could do something like, uh, well, it's not exactly a deal. I can do like control Spacebar for play, and then I could do like control shift Spacebar, control alt Spacebar. I can do control shift Spacebar. It's not letting me do it. Control shift Spacebar. Okay, can't do that. Alt space works. So then I can do alt space for uh, stop. So now if I go to playback, I should be able to do control space to play. All right, well, space bar, apparently control space bar is not a good option. But in theory, yes, you could do something similar to that. Paul, just maybe not with the space bar. Hey, hey look, hey, Steven. Yeah. <clears throat> just, just click play on your system and then hit the space bar. On mine, space bar just works automatically for stop and start and play today. Yeah, what was it, hang on, but does it do the last thing? Yeah, so it does the last thing you did. So if you hit play, space bar will work then. No shortcut needed then, Paul? Yeah, as long as you've hit play recently. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what if well, I couldn't get that to work. I wonder if I did like a shortcut and then just in space it would continue. But who knows? Well, um, if you guys don't have any other questions, um, you know, you can always submit them to us in our email box. Thanks. And we'll, we'll see you next Friday for our, our last one of the year for the public 15 minute future Friday.